You're starting your day with the Southern Illinois News Leader. Live from WSIL-TV, News 3 This Morning starts right now. Coming up on News 3 This Morning, we're taking a look at the damage around our region following last night's severe weather. Plus, if you're dealing with storm cleanup this morning, we have some tips for staying safe. Good morning. It's Wednesday, March 1st. Thanks for joining us. It has been an active night and morning, and for the very latest, we have team coverage. We're going to check in first with meteorologist Nick Housen in our weather center. Nick. Yeah, good morning. Now, we've been watching this really all night long, all the way back to last night when we, of course, had the storms roll through. And, of course, now we're monitoring another line of storms moving through. Um, we'll go ahead and send it to Ashley here, and we'll kind of run radar and kind of give you the, the latest. Yeah, that's right. Of course, we're still seeing some showers and thunderstorms across the area right now and still seeing some severe storms in parts of the region. Now, one of those severe storms, some of these are going to expire here over the next minute or so and uh, just not kind of updating with the computer system. But as we look further off to the south parts of southeastern Missouri, moving all the way east into western Kentucky and also including Pulaski, Alexander County in southern Illinois. Now, that particular warning that is now starting to be carved out from the west to east, that one goes until 515 this morning. Now until 530 is that warning there in Pope County. A lot of lightning embedded within these storms, some strong gusty winds and reports of hail too. Now there are no more tornado warnings in effect right now, but a tornado watch in effect until eight o'clock this morning. Some of those warnings still in effect are at least going to expire here rather shortly. Of course, we talked about the cell there in Pope County. You can see some very strong reflectivity coming in from these storms, showing some very heavy rain. We haven't really talked about that very much, but flooding also a concern with these storms and especially flash flooding. You see there as Nick is circling near, there near Eddyville, that would be one area that would we would be concerned with the potential for some flooding. Oak, some of these smaller towns there, Hartsville, Derby, uh, any of those areas could see some very heavy rain very quickly. Of course, Saline County seeing some of those thunderstorms right now, the severe storm going to expire there rather shortly. We have had reports again of some hail, some very strong gusty winds and a lot of rain embedded within some of these storms. Now, as they push further off to the east, as we look behind those storms, we dry out. Finally, we will be able to breathe a sigh of relief. We'll see much calmer weather as we move through the rest of the day today once we get rid of these storms. But as they push to the east, we do expect them to remain rather strong and perhaps even uh, in some spots we could see these warnings continue to progress further off to the east. Of course, we'll be watching Western Kentucky later this morning for that potential as they really haven't seen a whole lot of action, especially this morning. But now those storms starting to move through parts of those areas. But again, the drier air, you can already see it showing up there on radar just off to our west. With the drier air comes a big cool down. Temperatures already dropping down into the 50s, 56 in Mount Vernon, 58 in Marion. Right now, Paducah still at 71 degrees. Temperatures will remain rather cool later on today, but we will be dry. We'll even see a little bit of clearing late in the day. Strong gusty winds all day long, but those winds switch to the northwest, pulling in the cooler and drier air. Much more on this weather coming up. For now, back to you guys. Thank you, Rachel and Nick and uh, Ashley, of course, too. So uh, the weather team has been here all night. We are following, obviously, some breaking news uh, from those storms from overnight. Yes, there were two deaths. We're hearing from the National Weather Service that a person has died in Crossville, Illinois, a few miles away from Carmine. That wasn't the only death, though. One person died after a tornado swept through Perryville. Around 10 homes were badly damaged and several vehicles were blown off of Interstate 55. A Perryville family is picking up the pieces this morning after seeing a tornado tear through their neighborhood. That's right. The storm destroyed homes, vehicles, and almost all the family farm in Missouri. News 3's Brandon Morano has been following all night long as well. Brandon, how is this family this morning? Well, they're all doing okay, Kevin. Luckily, they have insurance that will cover most of the damage, but Ed and Alan Huber told me they're most thankful for seeing their mother alive. Ed Huber calls seeing a tornado rip through his neighborhood one of the most terrifying experiences of his life. The storm leveled his steel shed behind his house, damaging most of the equipment he uses to make a living in construction. Just across the street, his friend's semi was flipped over by the storm, and his brother says he lost millions of dollars in farm equipment, along with his mother's house, leaving memories scattered for miles. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we won't find. There's some stuff we will find, you know. Huber and family members spend hours after the storm hit looking for family memories like his mother's wedding pictures and other belongings. 
Now the Hubers say most of the material things can be replaced, but one thing that couldn't was the life of their 81-year-old mother. I'll tell you the story of how she made it out alive in the next half hour. Live in the newsroom, Brandon Murano, News 3. Thanks, Brandon. One person is confirmed dead in Ottawa. That's North Central Illinois. These pictures from social media show the devastation there. A tornado touched down about 445 yesterday afternoon. An uprooted tree killed the victim. There were widespread power outages in LaSalle County following the tornado touchdown, according to Amarin. The damage from this storm stretches from Perryville, Missouri, as Brandon just showed us, all the way through southern Illinois, including parts of Ava, Virgins, Elkville, Mulkey Town, north of Benton. We've also received reports of damage in White County and from small communities like Enfield and Crossville. The damage continues into western Indiana. We do have reporters, or we've had reports rather, that Interstate 64 was closed earlier this morning around mile marker 4. Uh, that would be near the community of Stewartsville. And we do have more coverage of the severe weather aftermath. Yes, News 3's Dave Davis is in Mulkey Town with more. And Dave, what are you seeing out there this morning? Kelly, this morning, since I've been out and about, I've went into Franklin County, or Williams County and Franklin County, and, and I've seen a lot of debris on the roads, a lot of small limbs. But where you start seeing the main damage is when you hit Yellow Banks Road, which is Yellow Banks Road, if you're coming on 148, is just south of Christopher. If you take that back west, that'll take you to Mulkey Town. And once you start on Yellow Banks Road, you'll start seeing quite a bit of debris wrapped around trees, sheet metal, a lot of insulation on the road and on the sides of the road, and especially out in the fields. Now, what you're taking a live look at right at the moment, this is a southeastern Illinois co-op power company, and they're repairing power lines here on River Road. Now, this road is just off of Yellow Banks Road, and when I pulled up just a little bit ago here, the power lines were on the ground since they've been putting them back up, and they've been risking everything out here. The lightning's been flashing all around them, and they're high up in this bucket repairing these lines. So my hat's off to them. They're out here doing a great job. I spoke to them a moment ago. They said they still have about 200 customers without power in, uh, in the Franklin County area here. Also, Ameren, Illinois, is reporting that they have 36 power outages in Franklin County and 128 in Perry County. Now, the, this area that I'm in right now, the Perry County EMA director, along with Franklin County EMA director, say that there's been three homes demolished in here. And that, I'm sure that's where the sheet metal and the installation that I was seeing came from but being so dark and, and heavy rain i just can't see where the homes were at the moment i'm hoping after daylight i'll be able to see more of that and let you know about that also right after the storms moved through a call came into 911 that three people were trapped i'm still working hard right now trying to get a hold of the christopher fire department to find out if the if there were three people trapped and the status of them and if they have been recovered or not Hopefully, we'll be able to have a little bit more for you coming up in a little bit on that. For now, live in Franklin County, Dave Davis, News 3. Thanks, Dave. There are some school closings today due to the storms. Seen here on your screen, El Verado Community School District 196, Perry County, Missouri School District 32, and Trico Community School District 176. School closings confirmed. Also, schools in Metropolis will be starting on a one-hour delay. It's 5.08 on your Wednesday, and here's the travel forecast. Ashley, what are people going to be dealing with as they get out there this morning? Yeah, the good thing is we're going to see much improved conditions later today. Those storms push further off to the east. For us, we dry out, but we also cool down. A look at your cooler forecast up next. Putting accuracy first, this is News 3 weather. It has been an active 24 hours, maybe even 30 hours across the region as we have been dealing with severe storms. But this uh, last line, a very long line of widespread severe thunderstorms being reported almost all along that entire line. Now, the good news is this is the cold front. So behind it, we see much improved conditions. The bad news, just about everybody is going to see some effects from this line because it is so large. So we've seen those thunderstorms all the way from parts of southern Illinois now into southwestern Indiana. 
uh, all the way into western Kentucky just now, starting to push into western Kentucky. And the National Weather Service putting out severe thunderstorm warnings all along that line through western Kentucky into Tennessee, too. So that will continue uh, likely until, say, 5 30, 6 o'clock this morning before those storms as they push east. Uh, do come to an end. So we're still going to deal with the severe storms, especially in parts of western Kentucky. The main threat there would be for some large hail, some very strong gusty winds. And of course, you can see there is a lot of lightning there. But the best news of all, as we look to the west, we do see much drier conditions and that will move through later today. Now from last night, this is over the past 24 hours. We have had many reports of severe storms, 22 reported tornadoes, and a lot of those focused in Illinois, not just Southern Illinois, but even Northern Illinois. Now, sometimes the reported tornadoes, sometimes it's the same tornado reported a, a couple of times. So that doesn't necessarily mean that we had 22 confirmed tornadoes, but all of these reports of severe weather, 130 reports of very strong winds, 169 reports of large Hail, totaling 321 reports of severe weather. Now, uh, that is a large severe weather outbreak, but especially when you talk about February 28th, March 1st, uh, very unusual, but of course not unheard of, that's for sure, but really focused across our region. Temperatures now are dropping behind that cold front. 57 in Marin, 55 in Mount Vernon. Paducah still rather warm at 71, but the colder air starting to push in. 56 in St. Louis, 39 in Kansas City, and it will remain cool throughout the rest of the day today as that cold front continues to push further off to the east. Temperatures remain pretty steady today in the low 50s. By tonight, we drop all the way down into the 30s, perhaps near freezing tomorrow morning. Hard to believe we were just talking about temperatures in the 70s, and now we're going to drop down into the 30s by tomorrow morning. But of course, that is more normal for this time of year, and normal weather for this time of year isn't all that bad. And I think that's something that we'll really uh, embrace over the next couple of days. By to, uh, later today, tonight, we'll see clearing skies. Tomorrow, lots of sunshine expected and temperatures not too bad. As a matter of fact, this weekend shaping up to be quite nice. High pressure starts to move in from the north by Friday, and again, looking like we'll see lots of sunshine. Temperatures today remaining in the low 50s, so actual temperatures from here on out are going to be near normal with those highs expected to be in the low 50s. Very strong gusty winds all day long. Even though the severe storms are going to come to an end, it's still going to be very windy, kind of blustery outside. And then by tomorrow morning, we see those temperatures drop down into the 30s, so a cooler start to the day tomorrow. High temperatures tomorrow will climb back into the 50s. We're even cooler on Friday. If you notice there, another cold front moves through Thursday night, Friday morning, but it's a dry front. However, it brings us temperatures below freezing Friday morning and then the weekend looking quite nice with highs in the low 60s. Okay, I'll take the freezing temperatures back if oh. we can be done with this for a little bit. Exactly. I wow. think I think you, be that, is, what you wish for. that is what a lot of folks would, would say around yeah. here. Yes. Alrighty, Ashley, thanks for you guys, you and the yes. weather team all night been here, so we appreciate you keeping us all safe. Well, it's what we live for. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. It's 515 now, and in Franklin County, there has been more damage there as well. Yes, News 3's Evie Allen was in Royalton and shows us what she found. Now, we don't know what time the tornado actually touched down, but we do know when the homeowner got back, there was nothing left of her home. All that's left is pieces of this once standing home. Homeowners say they left the house around 6 to take shelter at a relative's to wait out the storm. When they got back around 9, this was the shocking sight. The home completely gone, debris scattered everywhere, wood, food, and fallen down power lines. Homeowners didn't want to go on camera, but told News 3 that they were concerned about their animals and needed to get back. But the animals are nowhere to be found. Perry County Emergency Management arrived to help. Shortly after, Franklin County Sheriff's deputies took over to assess the damage. Fortunately for this family, no one was hurt in the path of the tornado. In Royalton, Evie Allen, News 3. Thanks, Evie. And we're sharing our storm pictures all morning. That's right. Here are some of the viewer photos we have received so far. We'll be back in two minutes. Five eighteen and topping to your health clean up after the storm. The Centers for Disease Control has some tips for staying safe. Wear sturdy shoes or boots, long sleeves and gloves when cleaning up debris. Also make sure to know how to operate gas powered or electric powered equipment and tools. Clean up spilled medicines, drugs, flammable liquids and other potentially hazardous materials. Also keep in mind there have been a lot of power outages as well. So food in your refrigerator or freezer 
may be spoiled this morning. Previous research has shown a connection between vitamin D deficiency and a person's risk for developing multiple sclerosis. Researchers found patients with the lowest vitamin D levels also had the highest risk of developing MS and those levels had to do with high vitamin D had the lowest risk of MS. The study concluded vitamin D status is important in the development of the disease, but researchers could not prove that increasing vitamin D levels would reduce the risk of MS. And we are going to keep an eye on the weather situation. Check in again with meteorologist Ashley Smith right after this. Putting accuracy first, this is News 3 Weather. And just into the newsroom, we do have another school delay to let you know about. Joppa Maple Grove is delayed by one hour. Of course, we have other school closings, so you can find those on our website, WSILTV.com. As we look at radar right now, we are starting to see things wind down in southern Illinois, but not so much as we look further off to the south. Western Kentucky is starting to see some of those very strong thunderstorms. We do have thunderstorm warnings all along that line of storms that is pushing off to the east and in southern Illinois, as I mentioned, starting to see some weakening to those storms or at least starting to see those storms push further off to the east. So seeing improved conditions, still a lot of lightning out there and some very heavy rain. So be aware of ponding on the roadways. And if you hear thunder, then the lightning is close enough. So do stay indoors. Temperatures right now in the 50s, 53 in Goreville, 52 in Junction. Notice the wind gusts there at Gallatin County Schools, 22 miles an hour, 55 in Jonesboro and Pinckneyville. Those winds will be strong at times all throughout the day today. Once we get rid of the rain, temperatures will start to drop. We'll fall back into the low 50s today and we'll pretty much stay there. Even tomorrow morning, temperatures much cooler. We'll drop down into the 30s by tomorrow morning. So low 40s at 9 o'clock, 38 degrees at midnight. The good news is we're dry beyond this for quite a while, as a matter of fact, with mostly clear skies expected tonight. Back to you guys. Thanks, Ashley. And switching gears to national politics now, President Donald Trump addresses a joint session of Congress for the first time. President Trump discussed his plans for the future and some of the accomplishments he's made since taking office. Security and immigration reform are at the top of his list. My job is not to represent the world. My job is to represent the United States of America. I believe that real and positive immigration reform is possible as long as we focus on the following goals to improve jobs and wages for Americans, to strengthen our nation's security, and to restore respect for our laws. President Trump is also calling for a budget that makes sharp cuts to foreign aid and domestic programs. The former governor of Kentucky responds to President Trump's address, saying that the president wants to, quote, rip affordable health insurance from Americans. Democrat Steve Bashir says Trump is also acting recklessly and ignoring threats to our national security from Russia. When the president attacks the loyalty and credibility of our intelligence agencies, the court system, the military, the free press, individual Americans, simply because he doesn't like what they say, he's eroding our democracy, and that's reckless. Bashir says President Trump has a moral obligation to serve all Americans, not just the ones that agree with him. Officials say President Trump's new immigration order will leave Iraq off the list of countries included in the travel ban. The Associated Press has reported the Pentagon and the State Department pressured the president to remove Iraq from the list. The agencies say that Iraq has been a big help in fighting ISIS. The other six countries will likely stay on that list. Amazon says it has fixed a problem that triggered a lengthy outage on its cloud storage service. Here's the details in today's Tech Bytes report. In today's Tech Bytes, thousands of websites are back up and running after a crippling outage. Amazon's massive cloud-based and web services went down on the East Coast for more than four hours. That system hosts more than half a million websites, including Netflix, Airbnb, and Spotify. YouTube is taking on Netflix and Hulu with its new subscription service. That service is called YouTube TV. For $35 a month, it offers programming from 40 channels and networks, including ABC. YouTube executives say it's aimed at cord cutters who think they pay 
way too much for cable. And Donald Trump set a social media record with last night's speech. The speech is now the most tweeted joint session or State of the Union address ever with three million tweets sent. The top tweeted moment was his call to repeal and replace Obamacare. And many of those are also about the First Lady's dress, looking mm -hmm. nice. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. When you see beautiful design, do beautiful work, you see what Delta can do. Allergies with nasal congestion? Find fast relief behind the counter with Claritin D. Strut past that aisle for the allergy relief that starts working in as little as 30 minutes and contains the best oral decongestant. Live Claritin clear with Claritin D. Breaking news and weather anytime. News 3 is always on at WSILTV.com, on your mobile device and social media. It's 527 on your Wednesday, and we're sharing your photos all morning, so be sure to send those into our social media pages. We've been getting messages via Facebook, but also you can send them on Twitter and just use the hashtag WSIL. WX and we will continue to keep an eye on the storm situations. Our weather team is here and on the road. Uh, we have a live team coverage that will be happening all morning long. Yes, and just a special shout out to them. They've been here all night since yes. yesterday when all of this started. So special shout out to them Absolutely. for keeping us safe. Stay with us. You're watching News 3, the Southern Illinois News Leader, live from WSIL-TV in high definition. News 3 starts right now. Good morning, it's 528 on your Wednesday. And we're going to head right on over to the Weather Center and get another update from meteorologist Ashley Smith. And Ashley, has the worst passed us now? Yes, we do think the worst of the storms and definitely the tornado threat is almost completely out of here. Now we say almost because anytime we have this kind of current situation, we could see those uh, tornadoes spin up at any time. But again, we think the risk for that is pretty minimal at this point. Most of those storms pushing east of I-57 right now. So parts of western Kentucky still seeing some very strong thunderstorms. Uh, of course, embedded within those storms, we could see some hail, some very strong gusty winds, and a lot of thunder and lightning. Now, in southern Illinois, conditions are improving vastly and very quickly because these storms are fast movers, but still seeing some of those storms linger in parts of Pope and Hardin counties especially. Temperatures right now in the 50s, 54 in Goreville and in Pinckneyville, 55 degrees in Jonesboro. Strong gusty winds all day today. We'll see a little bit of clearing this afternoon with temperatures in the low 50s. We will talk more about some much improved weather headed our way coming up. For now, back to you guys. That is something we like to hear. Thank you, Ashley. And we are following breaking news with the weather and two deaths to report in our area from those overnight storms. We're hearing from the National Weather Service that a person has died in Crossville, Illinois. That's a few miles away from Carmi. That wasn't the only death, though. One person died after a tornado swept through Perryville. Around 10 homes were badly damaged and several vehicles were blown off Interstate 55. A Perryville, Missouri family is picking up the pieces this morning after a large tornado ripped through the community late last night. It was the same storm that left one person dead on Interstate uh, 55. News 3's Brandon Morano has that story. Kim, is that that picture of mom and dad's anniversary? Looking at what he lost Tuesday night left Alan Huber remaining thankful. I didn't think she'd be with us anymore. Huber was in his truck with his two sons when the tornado hit. A couple minutes later, it was over with, and we jumped out, and my boy looked and said, Dad, Grandma's house is gone. That's when Huber remembered his 81-year-old mother was home. We didn't have no flashlights. I'm running down here, and we could see a little bit of light down there in the basement. The light was Huber's mother shining from what was left of her house. She says, I'm all right. And we got over here and brought her up out of the basement. When Alan's brother Ed showed up, he couldn't believe it either. She went down and crawled behind the couch, wrapped up with a blanket. Ed lost most of his construction equipment. 
broke these anchor bolts off and never moved the ratchet strap, sheared them off. And his brother Alan saw his family farm destroyed in seconds. It's crazy. But both were happy for one thing. Yeah, I was glad my mom made it. No cuts, no bruises, No cuts, no nothing. Something the Huber family calls a miracle. I know mom was praying because she goes to church all the time. And Ed and Alan tell us that their mother is resting comfortably at their sister's house in Perryville this morning. They say today will be a long day of rebuilding, but they are thankful that their mom is still alive. It's good to hear positive stories Absolutely. in times of destruction. Well, we have a handful of school closings as a result of these storms. El Verado Community School District 196, Perry County, Missouri School District number 32, and Trico Community Unit School District 176 are all closed today. And we also had um, an hour delay that's with Joppa Maple Grove School. And Metropolis as well. Well, our team coverage continues this morning, this time from Franklin County. News 3's Dave Davis is joining us uh, on the phone with more on the damage he's seeing. And Dave, uh, what are you seeing in Mulkey Town right now? Kevin, right now you're taking a live look at some debris here on Yellow Bank Banks Road. Now, Yellow Banks Road is just south of Christopher, and it cuts west over towards Mulkey Town. And once you get about a mile down the road, that's when you're going to start seeing the debris. Now, what you're taking a look at right here is a piece of sheet metal that's wrapped around or wrapped around the edge of this tree. And that's not an unfamiliar sight because as I drive up the road just a little bit more, you're going to start seeing a lot more sheet metal and wood and insulation. Now, take a look at this. I'm going to shine my lights across this field here, and you should be able to see it. There's quite a bit of debris out in this field, and this field cuts right across to where southeastern Illinois Co-op's been over there putting up power lines. So I'm su suspecting this is the path of the, the possible tornado that come through here. Now, the P Perry County EMA director and Franklin County EMA director both say that they saw a large tornado moving through this area, and they could see that during the lightning strikes. Now, that hasn't been confirmed yet by the National Weather Service, but that's what the Perry County EMA director and Franklin County EMA director are both saying at this moment. Now, I'm going to drive on up this road just a little bit here, and hopefully I can get there. There's a home up here that you can see quite a bit of the damage, and I should be able to get my lights on that. With it being so dark out here, it makes seeing the debris on the road and on the sides of the road really tough, as, as well as the homes that have been destroyed. Now, we, do, we have heard that there are three homes that have been demolished in this area, and I believe this is the driveway that I want to go up right here. There have been three homes that have been demolished in this area, and not long after the, the storm moved through, a call came into 911 saying that three people have been trapped. Now, so far, I haven't been able to make contact with the Christopher Fire Department to confirm that and confirm that they've been out of there, but I am actively working on that. Hopefully, I'll have some updates on that. Now, hopefully, you can see this home right here. The east side of this home is gone. It's just wiped out. looks like the windows are blown out. I haven't really drove up there because I still see vehicles. I don't want to uh, disturb the people if they are still around here, but this was a dangerous dangerous storm that moved through here. Hopefully once daylight hits, we'll be able to see exactly what happened with the winds. For now, live in Franklin County, Dave Davis, News 3. Thanks, Dave. It is 534 and the camera is wet in Mount Vernon this morning. Uh, Ashley, is the storm moving through that area still too or what are we looking at in Mount Vernon? Yeah, that's right. They're kind of on the back end edge of this storm system. So they are starting to dry out. Of course, the road's still very wet. So use some caution as you head out the door this morning. Your complete forecast up next.